Hello, my name is Mo, and welcome to the Nerdy Beardo channel, where beard length is never guaranteed. As you can tell, I've actually trimmed today. Today we're going to talk, be talking about one of the most important topics in astrophotography. It affects your field of view, it will affect the way that your images come out, it will affect the type of equipment that you need to choose, and it's probably one of the uh, topics that people make the most mistakes on when they're choosing their equipment, and if they're really getting into astrophotography. I know I've made that mistake. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about focal length. So background story about myself, I'm uh, actually uh, from Michigan, I'm not living there anymore, but uh, I used to fish a lot. And uh, there was one day back in 2015 when I decided I was going to get into astrophotography more seriously. At the time, I had a 127 uh, SLT. It's a small um, Mac Cassegrain that Celestron sells. Um, and uh, I wanted to get into something a little bit more serious. So I had this fishing boat, uh, and so my wife wouldn't kill me. I decided I will sell the fishing boat and buy a telescope. That's how I ended up getting into astrophotography. Now, when I got into it, I just went with the longest focal length I could afford, um, which wasn't necessarily the, the, the right decision um, for me, and it's probably not the right decision for you. What had happened was uh, I wanted to get a nine and a quarter inch uh, Edge HD telescope with a C-Gem mount. Uh, I ended up finding out that uh, there was a sale going on when I sold my boat, and uh, I got a Edge, uh, Edge HD 11 inch telescope uh, with a CGM DX mount for, for the same price as the nine and a quarter, which was a great deal at the time, um, but it increased my focal length by quite a bit. As a result, uh, I actually had a really hard time uh, using it. Even till today, I still struggle with using my uh, Edge HD uh, 11 inch. So today what I use, I actually use um, a number of different telescopes. I still have the HHD 11 inch, which I still love. It's, it's, a, it's a great piece of equipment. Uh, and in fact, the mount that came with it was just fantastic. I, st I still use that today. Um, but I also have a number of different rigs and I got different attachments. And the attachments that I got actually affect the focal length. So I, I have a Hyperstar attachment, which lowers the focal length significantly. I have a, a 0.7x reducer, which also lowers the focal length. Um, I also have an 80 millimeter William Optics scope, which is it's a great, great telescope, and I, I really, really enjoy using it. Um, and I actually use also um, lately this year actually I, I started using a 135 millimeter Rokinon. Uh, lens. It's only 135 millimeters and you'd actually be really surprised at the type of images that you can get with uh, a lens like a 200 millimeter or 135 millimeter. So with that let's let's start to dig into why focal length is really important, what it can help you with and why understanding it really is critical to deciding on which telescope uh, that you use and, and it can actually affect uh, significantly the amount of money that you will spend on, on the equipment. So what is focal length? Well, in the simplest terms, if you have uh, just a, a, a regular camera lens or if you have uh, a refractor type telescope, it's the distance between the primary lens and the point at which your light will get into focus at the back of the telescope. Now it's a little bit different if you have a reflector type telescope because the light comes in, it will bounce off of a primary mirror onto a secondary mirror and back to a focal point at the back of the telescope, which actually will increase uh, your focal length so that you can have a, a little bit of a shorter tube. So the easiest way to think about it is in terms of, uh, a, of a, a refractor. The primary thing that it really affects is the field of view. Um, so shorter fo focal length will have a wider field of view, longer focal length will have a smaller field of view. And you may be thinking about it in terms of magnification or zoom, but those are really not terms that we typically use uh, in astrophotography. 
And the reason is they're, they're very arbitrary. So zoom factors, for example, are used by camera cam uh, companies as um, mark, kind of marketing tools. Uh, and if you really think about it, it's like Zoom, but Zoom in relation to what? And uh, it, it's it's very arbitrary. So we typically think in terms of the field of view. And you can calculate the field of view by first calculating your image resolution. Your image resolution is a calculation based on the arc seconds per pixel. You might be asking, what's an arc second? Uh, well, first... Uh, if you want to understand what an arc second is, you have to think of the celestial sphere around the Earth. The celestial sphere is kind of a um, imaginary sphere that wraps around the Earth. You can break it up into 360 degrees. An arc minute is one sixtieth of a degree, and an arc second is one three hundred and sixtieth of a degree. And so, to calculate the field of view, you first have to understand what is the arc seconds per pixel and that's a function of pixel size and the focal length of your telescope so the calculation is actually pretty simple for um, your uh, image resolution you take the pixel size of your camera and if you have a DSLR you can get that um, from the manufacturer's website uh, or if you have uh, like I have, I have a dedicated astronomy camera um, and those specifications are usually given and you divide that by the focal length and usually the pixel size is in mu meters and the um, focal length is in millimeters so in my case I have a 3.8 and then you divide that by the focal length of your telescope and you multiply it by uh, a constant uh, it's like 206 point something or uh, you can do what I do, which is just go to astronomy.tools and they have all sorts of calculators for fig figuring that out. So based on that, that tells you the arc seconds per pixel. And the reason why it looks like things with longer focal length have higher magnification and things with tro shorter focal length have lower magnification is because it's because of that ratio. Uh, because if you have a higher focal length, it's going to uh, decrease the resolution per pixel. So you're going to see less of the sky uh, per pixel, and it's going to give this effect that you're zoomed in. And uh, if you have something that's wide field, like 135 millimeters, you're going to see many more arc seconds per pixel. And so you'll see a lot more of the sky uh, f per uh, image shot. And of course, uh, to calculate the, the total field of view, then you basically multiply that by the area of the, uh, of the sensor, and that's, that's how you end up with um, your, your total field of view and how much of the sky you can actually fit into a, a single frame. So, uh, it, you know, having and figuring out that focal length really uh, will uh, help you to under, kind of understand not only, you know, what telescope to pick, but it also helps you to understand what camera to pick um, because that's that's all that all comes into play. Finally, the the other thing that you really need to think about when you think about focal length is the f ratio. And what is the f ratio? So the f ratio is the speed of your um, uh, of your image uh, train. So uh, your telescope will have a certain rating. And uh, if you get, you know, a standard telescope, so for example, uh, in the case of my Edge HD, it'll actually say, so my Edge HD is uh, 2800 millimeter focal length, and the, uh, the aperture size, so that's the width of the, of the telescope, is 11 inches, or 280 millimeters. So if you take 2800, and which is the focal length, divided by the aperture, you get 10, and that's my f-stop, it's f10. So that's actually a pretty slow uh, imaging system. It means it takes, uh, even though it takes a lot of light in, but because the focal length is so, uh, is so long, it ac I actually need to take a lot longer exposures. So most people will put like a focal reducer on their telescope. In my case, I use one of two focal reducers. 
I will either use the focal reducer in the back, um, which is a Celestron 0.7x focal reducer. Um, and for my telescope, that is a 0.7x reducer. So what it will do is it will lower my focal length by uh, 30%. So I'll get down to somewhere, I think it's like about 1,960 um, uh, millimeters focal length. And you take that and you divide, divide it by um, uh, 280, and I'll get 7. So my speed will increase, which means I can take shorter, focal, uh, shorter exposure times. And that's, that's really important. If you're in light-polluted skies or you don't have a lot of time, that makes really a big difference, um, being able to take shorter subs. I also have another uh, reducer that I use with it called the uh, uh, the Hyperstar system. The Hyperstar system, when I finally got that, that's when things really opened up for me uh, in astrophotography, to be honest with you. Uh, until then, I wasn't really using my telescope. Uh, it, I spent three years with it basically in storage. I didn't really get much use out of it because it was so difficult to use. Um, because it had such a high focal length. What the Hyperstar system does is it takes out the secondary mirror in uh, my telescope and uh, puts a lens at the front and then the camera goes at the front of the telescope. Um, there's also another, uh, you can actually buy it from Celestron. Uh, they're called Raza systems. Um, but in, in my case, I just use my Edge HD. Uh, anyway, it, it decreases my focal length from 2800 millimeters to 560 millimeters and that gets me into f2 territory so what does that mean um, my aperture doesn't change because it's still 11 inch an 11 inch telescope but it it's collecting all that light now and I have that short focal length which means I can see a much wider field of view um, and at f2 it's actually 25 times faster than f10 so I can take very short exposures, like one or two minutes, and um, they'll come out really nice images that I would have had to take, you know, uh, four or five minute exposures uh, in the past. So, and I don't have to take anywhere near as many uh, exposures. So all that factors in uh, into your decision. So if you're starting out, you might be wondering now, well, what focal length telescope would I need? Um, my advice is don't get anything really longer than a thousand millimeters and even that that's that's actually really high uh, I would recommend that you get something a little bit lower but what I would do is calculate your field of view take the camera that you have and really understand for the different focal lengths uh, that you're thinking about how they affect that field of view and what you can actually put into uh, into the frame and then I would, you know, go on a website like Astrobin uh, and just look at all the different pictures that, uh, that you see. And depending on what you like, um, get a focal length telescope that's um, similar and will allow you to take those kinds of pictures. Um, but don't go too high because if you go too high, like I said, all your mistakes will also be magnified um, along with the, the image. So moral of the story is, I guess I could have had the boat and the telescope had I listened to my own advice. So if you like these videos and you want to see more, please like and subscribe. And uh, if you want to see some of the images that I've been taking uh, as of late and also the progression that I've had, follow me on Instagram at NerdyBeardo.